Hello and welcome to the tutorial on image adjustments in Photoshop CS 5.5. In order to open Photoshop we need to go down to the start menu down here, bottom left hand corner, click on all programs and then navigate to the Adobe Master Collection CS 5.5 folder. If we click on this we should get Adobe Photoshop. If there's a 64-bit version I click on that because it should be a bit quicker on the 64-bit machines. Now once it opens, in order to look at the image adjustments, we need to open an image. So to do this, we go to File, the top left, and then down to to open. So this is just a sample image that I've got, which I thought would be quite good to use when we're looking at image adjustments. Now when it automatically loads up, it puts it in a sort of tab viewing format, which I'm not particularly keen on. So if we click on this, we can drag it down a little bit and it will put it in its own window, which I found really useful, especially if you've got more than one document open at the same time. Now, if we're looking at image adjustments, they will be found under image and adjustments, which is quite helpful. Um, we've got a variety of different adjustments that we can apply here. So the first one, the top one is brightness and contrast. That's quite a popular one uh, for lots of different reasons, obviously, uh, you know, you can just tweak each of those different elements in an image. Don't forget, in most of these um, panels, you've got a preview bu button. So you can keep going back and seeing exactly how it's altered the image that you're uh, manipulating. So uh, just cancel that a second. Also, under image and adjustments, we've got levels, which is quite a useful one. It's something I use quite regularly. Um, basically, what you can do with levels is um, tweak the black points and the white points in an image and then just get the balance of the greys. So by doing this, we can give an image quite a, a different feel. So if I just click off the preview image, there we go. It's just uh, brought some of those darker tones out um, and improved the contrast a little bit. Um, so that's something that I think is quite a useful function in Photoshop. Um, there's other functions as well, which I don't use as much. I mean, curves is a similar sort of, um, idea but you get a different type of uh, graphical interface so you can tweak this I think the problem with me for curves is that it's not too difficult to make something look absolutely awful so as you can see yeah. although that might be what you're actually what you're trying to do so everything has a use I suppose um, so we just cancel that a second also under image and adjustments we've got exposure which is obviously quite self-explanatory you know if you've got underexposed or overexposed images um, you can tweak them slightly in this. I always think with some of these um, functions that less is more in a lot of respects. So I think it's a case of tweaking slightly rather than tweaking quite a lot. Uh, I think once you start tweaking by a large amount, things start to look uh, worse than they originally did. Um, vibrance is quite a nice one. This will uh, make an image look more vibrant. So um, you can obviously tweak the saturation as well in there. Um, I've got hue and saturation, quite self-explanatory, you know, you can affect the hue of an image um, and get some really quite wacky effects. Uh, and obviously, again, you can also just tweak it slightly, you know, if you want to accentuate a certain element of an image. Um, so back up to images and adjustment. Colour balance, this enables you to affect the individual colours that make up that image. So this is quite useful as well because um, sometimes you might an image might not fit in with perhaps say you're doing a magazine it's house style maybe on your front cover the type elements are red and black and white uh, and your image has got a bluey tone well you can essentiate the red tones in that and try and get it to just fit in that a little bit more so that's uh, again quite a useful one in uh, certain situations so if we could pop back up to image and adjustments again um, you've got black and white which is uh, quite interesting because um, this actually gives you control over the individual colours and how it's interpreted by the black and white. So you can decide, obviously if you've turned an image um, that's got dark reds and dark blues, black and white, it might not retain the detail that you want. So obviously you just go to the blue channel and try and bring that down a little bit. So I've just put the green down there, there's a lot of green in that image. You can see how that detail's really popped out of there. So, and if we turn it up, we lose a lot of that. So we're, it can become quite a useful function. Um, back to adjustments, we've got photo filter, which is, you know, photographers, videographers will apply filters to lenses, and, and this gives you the option to be able to do that yourself. Um, just apply the colour and increase the density. Uh, it's quite popular this uh, with uh, photographers, videographers. Um, 
those of you that watch Top Gear will see it quite regularly. Um, there we go. So let's have a look what else we've got under adjustments. We've also got uh, a channel mixer, which is very similar to the color balance, which, which we've just looked at. Again, it just gives you that bit of control over the different elements of that image. Again, you could create some quite wacky effects or just tweak things very slightly. Um, it's quite self-explanatory as well. You've got invert, which is uh, inverts the image. You've got posterize, which is, uh, in my opinion, a terrible 80s effect that um, if you would like, to recreate that you can do here. Um, I don't particularly think it does a great deal for an image but everybody uh, has different reasons to use different tools so back into adjustments we've got threshold. This is something I don't really use much at all. Uh, it turns the image black and white and uh, basically you can adjust how much of the image comes through in what colour. Um, I don't particularly find it useful in anything that I've done before but again that's not to say it doesn't have a use. Um, We've got gradient map. This is quite an interesting one, this one. I like this one. Uh, basically, we can apply a gradient to the color scheme of an image. So, uh, as you can see by clicking on these preset ones, you can get some uh, quite interesting effects. Um, what you can also do as well is you can make your own gradient. So, if we look down here on this bar, if we click below the bar, we can put in points which we can then change the color of. Okay, I'm just going to make a a very random one very quickly just to show you as an example of what we can do there these little points will just change how much it's affected you can delete those points if you put some in accidentally and as you can see quite an interesting little effect there it's been a gradient man it's a selective color this is again a slightly different way of affecting the color balance uh, in your image and you can select the different colors in particular so um, you know, it's just another way of uh, tweaking the colours, it's quite subtle although you can see it very slightly if I just move that up and down and then if we just go back and have a look at just once again we've got um, shadows and highlights which again can be quite useful just to bring out the shadows or obviously highlights of a particular image uh, if you don't feel they're exactly right We've also got HDR toning. Now HDR stands for High Dynamic Range. Now basically this gives you control over quite a few of the elements that we've you know, already looked at, um, but they're all in the same place at the same time. So again, it's a case of finding what tools you're most comfortable with using. Um, there's no right way, there's no wrong way. Variations, that's quite a useful one. I like this one because it's quite a user-friendly way of showing what the effect does. So we can affect how much it applies a certain color. And we can see, so, you know, obviously for this image, we could perhaps give it an autumn look by applying more of a red. You could do that through a variety of ways. We could do that using the um, photo filter. We could do it using the color balance. But it, like I said, I just think it's quite user friendly because it gives you a, a nice preview and a range of different uh, options. Okay, back up to image and adjustments. We've got desaturate, which will take the color out. We've got match color, that's something I don't use at all really. Uh, replace color, you can pick a color, uh, replace it with another color. As you can see, I've just picked the blue at the bottom, the reflection of the sky in the water. And we can see it's gone green, purple. Okay. Again, not something I really use, but could be of some use. Uh, you know, I feel free to have a play about with these things. And then we've got Equalize, which apparently redistributes the brightness in an image, but when I've used it in the past, I've not really seen much of a benefit to, or much of an improvement, should I say, on the images that I'm, I'm working on. Now under image as well, we've got a few auto um, commands. So we've got auto tone, auto contrast, auto color. I personally don't always find that these give you the best results. So if we've got a window and a history, what I tend to do is just go back on the original document and, and see if I actually think that it looks better and if it looks like it's been improved. Um, so don't just assume because they're auto functions that they will benefit the image or improve the image. I don't always find that's the case, so sometimes doing it manually using the adjustments is quite useful. The other general um, image adjustment function in here is you've got the image size, the canvas size. So image size is actually the size of the image, whereas uh, the canvas size is the actual 
the frame that the image is in. So if I increase this, it's added some white stripes down the sides um, to increase the size of the canvas uh, rather than the image itself, which can be, again, quite useful depending. Um, we've got image rotation. We can crop it using the crop tool, which is this one over here on the left. General image adjustment functions. Double click, and as you can see, that's cropped. Let's go back on the history palette. Uh, back to open. The other general image adjustment um, controls that you've got in here, other than size and you know affecting the individual elements in the image, um, we've got filters, which um, these can be quite useful for creating a variety of different effects. Again, it's just a case of having a good look through them. At the top category, artistic. Um, if we just say, for instance, click on smudge stick, you can see how this affects an image, rough pastels. And you've not just got the um, filters, you've also got filter amount on the right here. So, you know, don't just click on it and think, oh, I don't like it. Have a little play about, tweak it slightly and see what you think. So they're quite interesting. Uh, there's a whole host of different filters. So you've got blur type filters, brush strokes filters that are for distorting your image, uh, a couple of quite interesting ones, sphere eyes, you can see how that works, you know. Um, again, probably not a great deal of practical uses, but you might have one or two functions that are really useful. Lens flare seems to be a popular one, can stick that up in trees. It's not the best image to show a lens flare on, but um, obviously feel free to have a good play around with these. Um, so they're just general filters that you can apply to the image which drastically change the look of it. Like I've said, just have a good play about with these and find out which ones you're more comfortable with and which ones you think uh, are more beneficial for what you're doing. Thanks very much for watching.